Hey everyone and welcome to Christmas Day 12. Don't mind the noise in the background. Um, yeah, she, my sister's being a bit crazy. But today I'm going to be doing a little Q&A on all things to do with school, friendships, relationships, issues that teenagers are going through. So I put up on my Instagram for you guys to ask any questions that you have around these topics. So I'm just going to read out pretty much all of them and then yeah, hopefully give you guys the best advice that I can give. Obviously this year has been quite hard for everyone. We've all had to deal with different things. In terms of my life, lots of things have changed for me. In terms of friendships, I've obviously got a boyfriend now, which is something new to me. Obviously I've had to balance a lot more with school and YouTube. I've gotten new jobs and left them. A lot's happened so I've got a fair chunk of advice that I can give you guys based on what I've been through this year. But let's just get straight into it. Alright, the first question is one that I actually really like. It is, how do you deal with the pressure of choosing your career when you finish school? Because like it's kind of put that pressure on you that in school you need to like have your career and life planned out and you got to go to uni. So first of all I'd say you got to think about what are your hobbies and what do you like doing and what's something that you could continue doing that's not going to get boring. What's something that you could see yourself doing and making money from. And you also got to realise that university is not always the best path for everyone. I'm still in like a bit of a not sure situation because I want to study nutrition but I don't know if I want to do it in uni because I don't know, I just don't like the uni thing, but then I want a like diploma in nutrition, but I don't know, but I don't want to be a nutritionist, like I don't want to like sit in an office and like tell people what to eat and what not to eat. Just having qualifications in fitness, nutrition and travel, so then I can put it all together and produce a business out of that. But you guys just got to think, if you plan on going to uni, what is this qualification going to give you? What do you want to use with that? Like, if you study it, do you genuinely see yourself working in that set field or do you think you're going to want to explore other places? Don't feel pressured to make decisions now because things will change. Next question is how to deal with toxic friendships. I'm pretty sure we've all changed friends. We've all had friends that are good, friends that are more toxic than others. It's really just a part of life. What you've got to think about is why am I still hanging out with this person? Like, why do I need to hang out with them if they're making me feel bad? Is it really worth my time being in this situation? Have a think about who the other people are that are in your school or in your circle that you could spend more time with and slowly try and like break away from this person or these group of people that are being really toxic. And also if they're saying stuff to your face or like if you're in a group and they're like gossiping about people, like they're not scary, but try and say something like just stand up for yourself or for other people because they won't expect it and it just proves you're the tougher person and the bigger person. You don't need to f start a fist fight. Don't do that. But um, but if you say something to them, you'll put them in their place. And then another question that kind of follows on from this is how to deal with friendship breakups. So I have gone through many of these for all different reasons. Mainly it was just because the friendship was becoming more negative than good. And like I know it can be a bit sad sometimes, especially if you spent so many years with this person. But what you got to do is look to the more supportive and positive people you have in your life and really focus on them rather than dwelling on what was the past. Don't go through old photos, don't go through old messages, just be like alright that's happened, not really friends with her or him anymore, put it in the past. Try not to be all salty and like, petty and feisty with them, just try and end things on a nice level. Yeah you just got to focus on yourself after that and think about who else is in your life that you could spend more time with now and to be honest most of the friends that I've broken up with I've been able to move on pretty quick because I got to the point where I just hated being around them to get that like freedom and feel a lot more happier and have that weight off my shoulders I felt so good so it wasn't like I was missing them but there was one case with like a seven year friendship where that one was too hard and like it's it took me like a lot of years to kind of like move on and get over it but I don't know, I don't think I ever like fully will because it's hard losing a best friend that you've had for like eight more than that years. But just know that of course it's never easy but everything happens for a reason. How did you get your mum to trust you and have you always been so close? 
I feel like trust is a thing you've got to develop gradually. It's not something I ever really thought about because I've just been that kid that has trust with their parent. Of course, I do slip up every now and then. But at the end of the day, if you don't steal and you don't lie, then there hopefully shouldn't be much of an issue. But I think the best way to build trust is just to be honest. Like, admit to your mistakes. Tell them things. Tell them what's going on in your life. Like, if there's something that you want their trust for, just tell them the whole story. Tell them what your intention is, tell them who the people are that are involved in this. To get trust, it's just all about honesty. And to answer the other part, I've always been close with my mum. Yeah, I've always been very close with her. I don't know, we just get it, we get along very well. How do you balance work, fitness, school and a social life? Um, this has actually become quite hard recently, especially with December being Christmas, having a relationship, friends, going to the gym. I don't work anymore, I consider YouTube a job which i'm very grateful for that i'm able to like do this anyway balance i really just go by the day and just try my best to like plan things out i used to like have a planner and stuff but that just doesn't work anymore first of all i see luca a lot and i'm pretty much with him every day but then every now and then i do say i need to take like a day break to do school stuff or editing and filming and then the good thing is with friends they hang out with luca as well I go hang out with Luca's friends too, so I've got like a good balance. I don't really see heaps of friends outside of school, but when I do, make time for them and then I fit everything else around that. It's all like prioritised, so my main priority is obviously I have to go to school, and then if I've got things booked on or things that I need to attend, they're in their spot, and then anything else I fit around as much as I can. I'm a very busy child, and it does get a lot, but I definitely wouldn't change it for anything. Another kind of toxic friendship thing is any tips on cutting out toxic people? Be open with them. When I had to deal with some toxic friends, especially someone I'd been close with for a while, and I was getting real fed up with it, this is like my first time really confronting a friend. So I was a little baby and I just messaged her and I just said what was on my mind. Not in a like way where I'm like, hey, you please don't speak to me. I don't want to be your friend anymore. But I just said what's happened, why I feel this way. Spoken to like the friend about it at school. So sometimes it's best to like not confront them, but speak to them about it. Or you could just slowly drift from them, mingle with other people and then gradually like spend less time with that person. All right, how to speak to teachers about mental health. This one is one I'm not too experienced in because I haven't really spoken to a teacher like ever about stuff like that. It doesn't need to be to teach the school counselor or the principal or whoever you think is most like higher and important. Go to the teacher you have the best friendship with and the best trust with and speak to them first. Just say, hey, is it right if I talk to you now? Or would I be able to talk to you at recess or lunch or after school? Or maybe even send them an email and just say, hey, blah, blah, blah. There's a few things going on. I'm just wondering if I could have a chat to you because I don't really know who else to talk to. Start off with that. It's really like the teacher's job to help you guys and make you feel safe and happy. They're not going to have a go at you. They're not going to judge you. And there's that whole confidentiality thing where they not go around and tell people. They're here to support you, just remember that. And yeah, just go straight to that person you trust. All right, I get so much homework and it's hard to work out because I have no time. How do you do it? Periods too where I like, I'm like very busy and I don't have time to work out. You may find it beneficial allocating like one recess or one lunch a week to do homework. So at least you're like, well, I'm not gonna procrastinate here and slack off. I'm literally sitting in the library. I'm I'm going to do some work and get it done. You can just try and get as much done as you can in each lesson. So then there's less to do at home. Also, if you have freeze, use them wisely. And then you also may need to find other time to work out, like maybe in the morning, straight after school before you do homework or before bed. Tips on talking to your boyfriend or what to talk to your boyfriend about because I run out of things to say. With the two relationships that I've had, I mean, I've obviously got one beautiful, happy relationship now. But I also kind of had like one mini one before. And they were like two different ends of the spectrum. On my other one, it was hard to make conversation. I didn't really know what to talk about. Like we ran out of things to say. And that did not work out. I don't want to like scare you or say like, this, you guys aren't going to work out. But not a good thing that if you guys are dating that you are struggling to talk about things. I don't know if it's because you guys don't see each other much and you're messaging each other a lot. But what I suggest you do is instead of messaging, call them. Or, like, if you can, just see them and, like, make memories and have fun. You don't need to always talk about things and 
get to know them 24 7 it should be about like making memories with them yes you've obviously got to know the person you're dating but you are gonna sooner or later run out of questions i mean if you guys want to have like a deep conversation things you could talk about is tell me one thing that i don't know about you tell me something you like that i do something you want me to do more of i don't really know just ask them any deep juicy questions you got in your head I'm trying to avoid just messaging with my other relationship all we spoke about was the gym and work whereas now with luca this relationship that i have it's like we don't run out of things to say because we're always doing something even if we're not doing something we're just enjoying the time with each other it's not like hmm it's quite now i'm gonna think another question it's just so natural and easy and i feel like that's how it should be in a good relationship you kind of got to break down that like scaredness and like awkwardness you just got to be yourself because that's when everything just comes naturally i'm really self-conscious and slash insecure about my body and my weight how do you deal with it first of all there are a few things you need to ask yourself in this situation i've been in this situation before it's not nice at all first of all ask yourself what are you insecure about and why what is making you feel this way? Why do you want to change? What is this going to get you in life? And is this going to be worth it in 10 years time? I said this in a couple of videos back, but I was always insecure about my stomach. And I was like, I've always wanted to have just less body fat and more definition. And I got to the point where I was just so excessive. And I was like, Paris, what is this going to get you in life? Like, you're never going to be happy if you keep wanting to change. Yes, I'm all for self-improvement and working on yourself. Like, if you're constantly wanting to be less and less and less, and like, what is left of you? Think about it. People worth being in my life are not going to judge me or put me down based on the amount of body fat that I have on my body. I'd say a tip for that is also get rid of the mirror if you've got one in your room. Try to look at yourself less because I found when I had a mirror in my room... I would always look at myself every single day and see if I'm making progress. It was very toxic. Also, if it's pretty bad, try and speak to your friend about it or send me a message if you want me to give you some more like specific advice. And I know it's hard. I know you just can't flip a switch and you're like, oh, happy with myself. It's a gradual process, but you've got to start by figuring out like, is this worth it and why am I self-conscious about this? How do you cope with school drama? Um... Oh, <laughs> I'm so sick of school drama. I cannot wait to be finished with it all. It is so annoying. What I've come to realise in my 12 years of school is that people love drama and they need something to jump onto and they just need to feel all excited because they have nothing better to talk about than other people. You've got to realise that you're the bigger person in this situation just let them be. Let them have their fun. If you don't give into it, if you don't fight back, they're going to get bored. Don't give people stuff to feed off of. Or even just say, like, can you just stop talking about such and such? Like, they're not even here to defend themselves. Like, grow up. And if it gets too much for you, evacuate for yourself from a situation. Go somewhere else. Find new friends. Just as an example of me not letting drama get to me because this incident that happened to me could have gone two ways. I could have cried in a hole, let everyone talk about me, or I could have embraced it the way I did. I'm not going to get into the fine details, but there was an incident where something was posted on Facebook and everyone in South Australia thought I was a criminal. Bloody hashtag, uh, looking through windows in a fruit store. It's actually quite, it's a funny story, but we're going to save that for another time, I think, because it is, I don't want it, it's, it's still too soon. Um, but anyway, yeah, the whole school thought I was a criminal, so went to school the next day, told the principal and the head of senior school exactly what's happened, so they were on board and they could let the teachers know. And then I walked to um, put my bag away, and then like everyone in their he home group, their heads were turned at me, and Luca, like they're all like, oh, there they are, that's them, all just saying stuff. And then at that point, I could have just, you know, bursted into tears, started crying, Everyone hates me. Everyone thinks this. It's not true. Oh, please, it's not true. I beg you, I beg you. And we just walked through and I just waved. I was like, yep, it's me. That's me. Believe what you want to believe. Are you actually serious? Do you actually think I'm a criminal? If I did something wrong, I would be in bloody handcuffs right now. I wouldn't be walking around school. But at the end of the day, you just got to laugh about it and just say, wow, is that all you got in your life? How to get through a breakup? Ooh, good question. I have only had one bad ish breakup which you guys have seen in my video a while very while ago 
it was very hard especially like if it's your first relationship first of all when it happens no matter who breaks up with who don't look at photos don't go over old messages similar to the friendship thing don't recite everything that's happened because it's going to make you more sad thinking about it if there's like photos in your room or whatever take them down don't manifest on what was in the past because you're going to want to go back to it um don't speak to him or her like yes let's still be friends but in the early days don't be because you're going to speak to them and it's going to be very very hard for you you're going to want to be with them you can cry you're allowed to cry rant to people scream at people punch your pillow do whatever you need to do to get out all that anger but like two or three days later you're gonna be in that like powerful i'm ready to work on myself phase yeah you just gotta look forward to like the bigger and greater things in your life i thought when i had my first harsh breakup that i was done for and that i'd be single until i was 50. and then out of the blue i met luca and then Everything has just turned around. Also, don't listen to sad music. I did that and it just put me in a bad spiral. How do you cope? How, yeah, that makes sense. How do you keep up with all of your school work and still manage to produce high quality and well edited and entertaining videos? First of all, thank you very much that you think that. I try my best to put out the best stuff that I can. It does get hard sometimes, obviously, like finding time. But because I have freeze, it's been really helpful in allowing me to do this. I do. Well, I did use my freeze to edit quite a lot. And then I also did use them for homework. So it's just all about finding that balance. It's kind of as I said in a question before. How do you deal with people at school knowing you have a YouTube channel? Um, I embrace it because I knew this was going to happen. I wanted to start young for a reason. Yep, make fun of me. Watch my videos in class. Do whatever you want to do. Thanks for the engagement on my channel. It doesn't bother me because I'm like, well, you know what? In the bigger picture, what effect are they going to have on my life? Like, am I going to give up everything? Because these little 14 year old boys want to laugh about it. Like, no. Like, I made my channel to help you guys that are, have watched this far into the video. I don't care what people at school think. If you don't let it affect you and you don't feed back to them, they're going to get very bored. How do you keep positive? Like, I have one life. Do I want to spend it miserable and, like, waste it feeling sad and. Like, everyone goes through bad things. Not to compare anything, but some people go through worse stuff than others at different times of their life. You can't let them things drag you down. You can't let it ruin your life or impact it more than it already has. You've got to try and have that mindset, like, well, bad things happen. I'm not going to let that become me. I'm not going to let that ruin me. I still have a life to live. I still have my goals. And these people who are here to support me, I... Just want to make the most of it and just want to have a good, fun life. Like, it can be hard to stay positive, especially when things are really bad. But that's when you turn to your friends, whoever's there to support you. Well, I th think they are majority of the questions. My f jaw is dying. I've spoken way too much. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and took something away from it. Um, if you guys enjoyed, please give it a like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you all in my next video.